I guess it started about, I think it was about 18 years ago, when James decided that he wanted to create a meadow on one of his arable fields. Um, so previously it had been cultivated every year and grown crops, um, and he decided he was going to create a meadow. He did this under an um, agro-environment scheme, so it was supported by government funding. We harvested a green crop from Rotten Airfield. So basically we were making, like making hay. So we mowed it, um, but we actually picked it up with a forage harvester. So we brought all the grass, all the seeds and everything up here and went up and down with a muck spreader. And, and, we, and we spread sort of half an inch thick of chopped grass seeds and everything and rolled it and harried it and, and, and just left it and we are up right up on the top of the Marlborough Downs. The soil here is quite thin and not very fertile, so as an arable crop it was never very profitable or viable. So this was an, an alternative to do with it. So he harvested seed from the adjacent county wildlife site, um, which is a piece of chalk grass and which belongs to the Science Museum um, on the airfield at Rawton. So they harvested seed, but obviously they harvest seed on a day and they get what's in seed that day. So it's very much a kind of still photograph almost of that meadow. And that photograph then gets kind of printed onto the next meadow, but it's very much a photograph. So what you don't get is the before and the after, um, but you don't get the early seeding things, the things that seed and flower early because they've been and gone, and you don't get the later things because they aren't in seed yet. Um, so what we wanted to do was fill in the beginning and the end. So we spoke to Donald McIntyre, Emma's Gate Seeds, who has been an absolute inspiration. And he put together a list of half a dozen or so different species to just supplementary seed it. And so we added the seed into the mix. And that sounds very easy, but it's a really difficult thing to do. And it's something that we've learned how to do over, over quite a long period of time. It's three years minimum between putting the seed in and, th and, and things appearing um, but if you know if you look at the meadow here we have really got a wonderful diverse species here and it just provides an environment that is, is good for wildlife and you've got skylarks singing away we came up here we had a red kite just as we walked into the field they're normally, we've got an abundance of corn buntings and uh, there's a pair of uh, grey partridge um, on the further side of the field. So it, it, it's, it's lovely to see that diversity coming back in. And part of that is because this is, it, it, it's left alone. We don't disturb it. Uh, the rest of the sort of arable fields, there's a fairly regular uh, sort of tracking through of inputs and mowing them and topping them and things so th this field will get harvested for wildflower seed uh, at the end of this week um, in which they come in with a brush harvester which is a little bit like a, a vacuum cleaner that you've got a series of brushes that will sweep up and will extract the seeds out of the seed head and this is a bit of yellow rattle um, and this is one of the seeds that they that, that were uh, very interested in. And there is your little yellow rattle seed. In 2015, when we put the we we put these species in, we only planted 340 grams of seed per acre. The whole field here was sort of about half a gallon of seed. And you would, you would think that that was, so yeah, it was four kilos or something that was spread over a 50 acre field. And you would think that was so insignificant, it was never going to work. And yet, five years on, all the species that were planted are now a sort of apparent and spread over most, most of the site. So that was a really great thing to do. And I, I think without the Marlborough Downs, it would have been quite a, uh, a difficult thing to sort of, in hindsight, you'd say, yes, I, I'd invest the money in it. But I think Gemma had more confidence than we did. Uh, and so through the Marlborough Downs, they sort of purchased this seed. Because it's very labour intensive, the sort of harvesting of wild flower seeds. But what a benefit now. And that's a one-off? 
that, that was the, we've only done it the once now. Yes. Yeah. Two years ago, we harvested um, three quarters of a ton of yellow rattle seed, uh, which I think represented 30% of what was harvested in the country. So its field is quite a significant generator of wildflowers. And, and the, the yellow rattle is so critical within the establishment of uh, wildflower meadows because is it, that is the species that suppresses the grass. We had already looked at Nikki's meadow and she had a very boring bit of nothing grassland, just grass, a few bits of bits and pieces in, a bit clover, nothing very exciting at all. A very grassy meadow and we thought well we want to spice this up a bit but instead of taking a snapshot we're going to make the movie here. So we put together a bespoke mix of flowers that would flower from very very early right the way through the whole spectrum, the whole the whole season, the whole you know from, from spring right the way through to late summer um, and obviously in that way not only are you getting the, the flowers, so the beauty of it, but you're also you know, you're providing for the pollinators and the insects and everything right the way through the year, so you don't get that kind of snapshot. So, yeah, Nikki's, we made the movie. And we did that by, first of all, taking a hay cut, then grazing the sward down, so it was really, really short and really tight, much shorter than we would normally want it. We then put um, a set of discs across it, so discs are absolutely what they say, sort of kind of sharp discs that you pull behind a tractor. You can adjust the, um, the angle of the, of the disc so it can cut shallow or a deep cut. We cut quite shallowly and all that does then is cut the roots of the plants that are there, turns a bit of soil over so you've got a bit of bare soil so you've got that germination opportunity. What it doesn't do is kill what's there because a lot of people think the only way to really create good species rich grassland is to start from scratch and spray off and you know get back to bare soil and then create a new habitat. The problem with doing that is that as soon as you well as soon as you turn the soil over you release all the carbon. So you know apart from anything else, you upset the soil biota, you know, so that isn't good. And you just provide germination opportunity for everything, not just what you're planting. So all the ragwort, all the thistles, all the stuff that you, you know you don't really want to encourage in also comes in. So we didn't want to do that, as I say, so what we what we need though is a bit of bare soil because wildflower seed obviously just drops from flowers. It doesn't get drilled into the ground, it doesn't get dug in, it just drops from the plant onto the ground, but it needs some bare soil. It needs trampling, and usually that comes from animals grazing. Um, we rolled it, so um, it's got really good contact with the soil and the soil moisture, which is essential. So wildflower seed needs light and it needs moisture. And if it's got those two things, then it will, and, this, and space. Um, and it will grow and we've given it space by chopping back everything else and kind of just not not damaging it just kind of slowing it up a bit um, just trying to you know kind of reduce that amount of competition so those little seedlings got a chance to get going before they're swamped by the grass we did that in the autumn and it's important to do that in the autumn because you've still got some warmth in the soil but you're likely to get some moisture up here on the chalk if you do it in the spring you know as the soil's warming up in the spring it's likely then you're likely to get, get a dry spell and you'll get nothing growing at all. Um, however, with, with Nicky's, we sowed it. The next day it started raining. It didn't stop till February. Then it didn't start again till July. <laughs> so the first year was a disaster. And uh, we found one kidney vetch the first year, the first summer. It was, it was, it was very disappointing. Um, but we were patient, so that was great. Well, this is massive. The difference between when I bought the property 20 years ago and having it being what it was for the first 10 years to now is spectacular. We have, well, it just brings, you just love it. The feeling coming through here, that's it. You just, your mind just goes into the beautiful things that you're seeing. You drift into, you know, a different space. What's happened here is the flowers, the, 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 the grasshoppers, the bees, the, all the bugs. It's so different. I mean, we're looking at, it's, oh, it's like sun and the moon. It's just so different, yeah. I, I, it's hard to explain the feeling I have when I come into this field against any other. It's just amazing. Well, I started, when I, when I started to change everywhere from arable to grass, there was a massive difference already. The way I could use the property and the, the bugs and the beetles and all the flying in insects and the birds and the noise and the sight and sound of it changed so much without doing any propagating of the, uh, of, of the flowers. So I was already very inspired to do that. And then I saw James's field and I saw what Gemma was doing and I thought, I like this. Can we ever make these fields like that? So we picked these two fields here 
and there was rag work, there was rubbish, and I honestly did come into it thinking, how on earth am I going to suppress all of the bad things without doing anything, it's all organic here, and actually get this, you know? And here we are, and it is to do with, we, we put the seed in, and we hard grazed, and we waited quite a while, but, you know, there was an instant change from, from a normal field to the, you know, the, the flowers came up, but over the time, over a few years, here we are with this. So I would say to anybody, you know, go for it. It, it does work. Um, and uh, it's, it's not very hard work <laughs> to get it there. You know, it's, it's beautiful. And how has it been for you to be part of the Marble Down Space for Nature in that, that kind of collaborative effort? Well, it's lovely to be involved because you, you hear everybody else's stories, you get inspired by what people are doing. Hopefully what I'm doing in a, some way will mean that a farmer maybe who is very into the crops and, and the pesticides and all the, you know, all of that, they might be inspired to go, I will put a little patch in. So there's lots of reasons why I, I really would li like doing this because I think it's a great, it's a great showcase for so how you can do it. And we're all local, so if I can do it here, next door neighbour can do it there. Yeah. Well, this was known as Park Barn and it was a, a small racing yard. And in fact, Sir Gordon Richards started his training career up here. He lived up here and he trained his horses. And out here you can see the training gallops. But we've got this wonderful area and Gemma and I have decided a couple of years ago that we would turn this into a wildlife reserve. And what we're trying to do is to um, concentrate all the things that we've learnt on the 25,000 acres of the Marlborough Downs into this one area so that people can see all these things. They can see what a beetle bank looks like, what a bug hotel is, how you put kestrel boxes in the woods, what an owl box is. All these things in one place so that if you want to do the same thing in your garden you can. We've even got a small wild pond and it's going to be great to look at all these things in one spot. We've been looking at uh, James's seeds, is that we're going to use his seeds to sow into this area so that people can see the progression, what it looks like before we've planted it, how long it will take over the couple of years to grow, and then you come back here in two years' time and it'll look completely different. My father bought this land in 1937, so we've been here quite a long time. And, of course, in his day, it was all about dig for victory. Um, all the hedges were ripped out, all the ponds were dug up and filled in, and it was a desert, really. There was, you know, he saw the wildlife deteriorate over his time. The fields were denuded of li wildlife, without all the habitat. And now we're in a lucky position of being able to put all this stuff back, and we're seeing how effective that is. You give wildlife that right habitat and it will come back. And that's what we're doing. We're just providing this habitat, we're feeding it, and we're watching it flock back.